Good morning. It's Sarah Thompson here again with you on a Wednesday morning. And I hope you've been having a good week so far and that you've been reflecting on potentially where your hope is coming from. Are there false things that you've been putting your hope in that you've identified and that you've taken to the Lord and um, asked him to examine with you? I, I hope that's the case. Uh, so what I wanted to do is to anchor our time in a passage and a story about Jesus and how he interacted with uh, a couple of individuals in the New Testament. Um, in Luke chapter 7, verses 36 through 50. And I wanted to just um, examine this in light of where we put our hope and what we need to repent of sometimes and the repentance is in this passage, but um, it may not seem obvious at first, so I'll walk us through it a little bit, um, but I wanted to give us um, some time to immerse ourselves in a story of Jesus. So this story takes place at Simon the Pharisee's house. He's asked Jesus to dinner. We don't know exactly why he has asked Jesus to dinner. The Pharisees have actually been very critical of Jesus up to this point, and so he may be testing Jesus and and actually what he has neglected to do, Simon has neglected to offer Jesus courtesies that were very common in the Middle Eastern culture when you ask somebody, someone to dinner. And because he has neglected these courtesies, we don't see it this way because we don't live in that culture. But in that culture, that would be a kind of a big insult, a, a really clear sign of disrespect. For Jesus. Jesus seems not to take much notice of this or at least not care about it too much. Um, but there's a woman in the room who seems to care about this, um, who loves Jesus because she's been forgiven by him. And she's known to be an immoral woman, uh, someone who sins, and she decides to extend these courtesies to Jesus. She's come prepared with some perfume and she goes to Jesus who's reclined at the dinner table and she starts crying at his feet and she washes his feet with her her tears and her hair and she pours perfume on them and she's kissing them and she's just pouring out her devotion to Jesus. So Simon who has invited him to dinner is watching all of this perhaps from across the table or somewhere in the room and Simon starts to criticize Jesus in his mind. And he says, if he knew, if he's a prophet, someone who knows God and tells of God's truth, he would know that this woman is immoral and a sinner. And by implication, Simon is really saying, Jesus shouldn't be letting himself be touched in this way, um, interacted with in this way by a woman of her character, if he is a man of God. <clears throat> and so reading Jesus, reading Simon's thoughts, Jesus turns to him and he answers Simon's thoughts, picking it up in verse 40 of Luke chapter seven. And he says, Simon, <clears throat> I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other, but neither of them could repay him. So he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one from whom he canceled the larger debt. Jesus said, that's correct. Then he turned to the woman, but said to Simon, look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you did not offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the first time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. 
so she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said amongst themselves, who is this man that goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. So what does this have to do with repentance? I want you to notice here that it says that the sins of the woman have been forgiven. So she is showing her great love for Jesus because her sins have already been forgiven. She knows the life that she's lived and she wants forgiveness. She knows that she needs it and she's come to the Lord for it and he's granted it. He even says it to her twice. Don't you love that? He says it to her twice <clears throat> to reiterate it. But for Simon, he's actually offering Simon a chance at repentance because what Simon is not noticing here is that even though he is a teacher of the law, a teacher of the truth of the word of God, he has a self-righteous attitude. He sees himself above this woman in this passage. And he is in need. That is a sin. That, that is a sin to consider myself better than someone else. And, and he is in need of forgiveness. He's, he, he's in need of the offer of repentance. And I see this offer of repentance from Jesus as a holy invitation a holy invitation because the Bible tells us that God doesn't want any of us to perish. He loves all of us. He loves the world. He loves the people who don't think they need him and the people who do think they need him. And if that's true, then in his correction of us and of Simon here, he's actually offering us to hope in him, to hope in the purity and the righteousness that only God, only Jesus can provide him. Because even though he really only owes 50 pieces of silver compared to her 500, he still owes. And so I just want to think about that in light of, in light of maybe what we need to do um, as we live our life with God, as we think we know him, as we do know him, are we willing to let him correct us and offer us a holy invitation to repentance? What are the seemingly small areas that maybe are in our hearts that he wants to point out to us in a loving invitation to turn around, to change our minds about ourselves and to not just think in our own wisdom, but to see his wisdom, to see that he is the only one who can cancel our debts, and yet he wants to. He has come to do it. He has done it. We just need to accept that holy invitation. So uh, so I hope that gives you a little food for thought this week as we continue to reflect on where our hope lies, what needs repentance in our lives, and I hope you see Jesus as drawing you closer to him, no matter where you stand. So may you be blessed. Love you all.